I'm on a double-decker bus traveling through Manhattan, you know. It's pretty standard for me, you know. They're all around here, but I have to hang up because we're on the film and we're wasting film. But, but call me later because I'm going to be downtown and we'll go do this thing. Ta oh, Tower Records, here we are. They put up a, a thing of me. All right, leave me a message with your number, okay? All right, Lamb, bye. Okay, we're approaching Tower Records, right. Here we go. Oh, I don't see anything there that they're talking about. Everybody's always lying to me about something. Did you shop for CDs in Tower? I told you I didn't shop for anything. CDs, clothes, shoes, nothing. I really didn't. I mean, we used to beg the guy at the corner for a bagel. We didn't beg him, but my friend Josephine and I, she lives in Sweden. She used to try and help me get waitressing jobs, but I could never keep them. And um, she, you know, she didn't understand. Hmm. Should we wait for that? Growing up knowing that you always wanted to be a singer, is this the place where um, you needed to be? Does this really help launch your career, or do you think you could have done it someplace else? I think that New York, definitely for aspiring um, people in the music business, is really the, the, well, definitely now there's a few other places that are catching up, but New York is, I mean, for me, it seemed like it was the only option and being, you know, growing up, always coming to the city and working at different, um, working at different studios and stuff like that. And it's just a place to meet musicians. And that's how I kind of got my start because these musicians would be like, what's this kid hanging out here for? And I was like, cause I want to sing, you know, I'm a singer. And they'd be like, yeah, right, whatever. So then um, this, these two guys, actually their names are Paul and Tony, um, were, were playing in a band and they, they, they listened to me sing because I had a friend who was very nice and let me stay in her house. I lived in this little loft bed and I met all these different people, different musicians who didn't take me seriously at first because I was like this little kid in high school. And then they heard me sing and they were like, all right, well, we'll let you sing back up on some demos and some, do some stuff. And so then I started doing more and more things, and I became a backup singer um, for Brenda K. Starr, who really took me under her wing and really helped me. And, um, you know, because a lot of people wouldn't have done that. A lot of people don't encourage people in the background. Um, but she did. And, you know, it was what street are we on? It was somewhere around here, SIR 57. What street are we on? I have no sense of direction. We're on 50, uh, now. Heading up. Okay, anyway. We were at SIR and I went to an audition and she was just like, I remember getting there and what that night was like and stuff and she just was very cool and supportive from day one. She's like, you're trying to steal my job? And then she was like just laughing and she, um, she was cool. She helped me out when I needed it. So what else are we talking about? My New York accent is really coming out, driving around the streets here. So you better watch out. By the time we get done with the interview, you're not gonna understand a word I say. <laughs> And tonight, you know, I'm freezing cold on a bus in Central Park West and 84th Street. Actually, I used to live a block away from here, 85th. That's where I lived in the loft that was this big on top of my friend's kitchen. And you have to step on the cabinet to get into my loft. And I had my sole possessions were my posters and my, um, my little comforter and my tapes, my demos, my writing books. That was it. I lived there for like six months, and then we had these crazy roommates. Yeah, memory lane. I used to take, <laughs> I used to take the one train from down on uh, Broadway there, I'd go to 19th Street, and record in the back of this little wood shop. And I would work. I used to work at, um, like I said, the sports bar, and I would, I would go to work at the sports bar. I would wake up like in the afternoon, pretty much what I do now. Go to work sell t-shirts, coat check, whatever. Then um, I would go to the studio at like one in the morning, sing all night, write, sing, whatever, and um, take the train home at like seven in the morning, sleep, do it all again. Right around the corner from here. <laughs> 